Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Glad to have you here as always. This video is about Bionicle set number 8532. This is Onua, the Toa of Earth. And uh, he was a 30 piece set. And just like the three that I've done before this and the two that I'll be doing after this, it was released in 2001. There was a second release of the exact same set, but it included a mini CD-ROM and it retailed for $6.99. If you wanted to pick this up on the secondary market, Bricklink has it for about $10 um, in various states of completeness. Um, if you want to get it without all the packaging stuff, it, it's pretty reasonable price, 10 to 20 bucks. Um, they do have five sealed listings that start at $90 and then go to $126. So there's not that big of a, a price difference between the sealed versions. Uh, on eBay, you can get it by itself for about $15 to $25, you know, plus shipping too. So it's a little more pricey on eBay. Um, if you want to get the completed set, you know, already put together and stuff like that, it goes from anywhere between $20 and $40. Um, and then the seals go, I think I've only saw two of them, and the cheapest one was $120. So, honestly, Bricklink is probably the better way to go to get yourself one of these. Um, <clears throat> I don't have the canister for this one or the other two. I have no idea where they were. And maybe someday I'll find them, maybe I won't. Um, but you're not really missing anything with the canisters. They're all the same, except for the artwork and the color of the cap. Um... I think those were the stats. Uh, I built this how it was with the digital instructions. They actually have the hands on in this orientation, which seems a little strange considering the fact that this guy digs tunnels and stuff. You would think his hands would be like this. It makes a lot more sense, but I followed the directions how they were. Uh, he comes complete with double karate chop action. I mean, it's not really Karate Chop. He's going to claw your eyes out. He's... <laughs> so, like I said, he, he's the Toa of Earth. And now this poses some questions, since we just did Pohatu, the Toa of Stone, who has power of stone and stuff like this. This guy digs tunnels. He's underground, and he controls the Earth. Um, well, does it overlap with the stone? Does it supersede the stone? Is it a redundancy? Does he, being the toe of Earth, have power over stone as well, since Earth is just pulverized rock? I mean, if we're talking about dirt, dirt is just pulverized rock that's been eroded away, mixed with organic materials. I mean, that's, that's dirt. And then also, if he's digging underground and making tunnels and crap like that, he's digging through stone because after a while you stop hitting dirt and you hit stone and clay and fossils and and caves and it's all made out of rock so it'd be interesting to see who has well i mean it's not who has more power over the stone clearly pohatu has more power directly over stone but Onua would have more power over other material, you know? But you would think that either he does have control over stone or he's just strong enough to cut through it. Because, you know, he's little, little rat claws he's got. He's, you know, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so the design of this, it's just like the others, is pretty much the same. Um, except he has his legs a little different. These are upwards as opposed to the other ones where it's down there. You know, he's actually got thigh and calf and the others are flipped over. Um, so, you know, doesn't skip leg day. He is hunched over slightly, which makes sense. You know, he spends a lot of time in tunnels and he's got, his hands are essentially his weapons. Uh, this is the first of the ones that we've seen where the gears are on both sides so that when you move one, the other goes in the opposite direction. Because, I mean, he does have that kind of, like, burrowing action, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Um, you know, that's his whole shtick, 
is digging. Um, you know, he's dark because, you know, earth, dark and dank. Underground, really dark. Um, there's not really anything else, you know, for his physical description that's different than the others. Honestly, it's all very much the same. It's the same parts, different colors. He's got the dark gray where Kopaka has the light gray. Um, you know, which is kind of odd because the other ones had like the same color as the rest of them, but a slightly different shade. But, you know, I mean, if you think about it, the gray and the white is kind of... There's only so many shades of white you can do for Kopaka. As in, you, you get one shade and then you got to do something else that's kind of a light color to contrast like the other ones do. And this one is, is fairly fine. It's kind of a... The darker bluish gray, I think, is what the proper term for that color is. And the black. And, I mean, that's fine. You know, it makes sense. Um, oof. I actually, right before making this, touched up a little bit on the lore. Um, and, I mean, it goes, goes on and on and on. There's, what, a decade of lore behind these things? But it says this guy was more of, like, the the silent one, very introspective, and kind of, like, the wise one of the group. Which makes sense, you know? You spend a lot of time underground by yourself, you get kind of introspective. You, uh... Talk to yourself a lot. You got a lot of time to think. Um, and yeah, I, I kind of got nothing else to say about him. You know, uh, I did forget to mention with the other Toas that in the back of their instructions, you get to combine them three each into either this one or this one. And apparently this is what they did to help them in the lore, in the the plot, essentially, of the first season of them. And you take three of them, you combine them together into sort of like a, a Megazord, and each of these instructions come with a section of the instructions for it. Because it's like, this is uh, Pohatu. He starts step 17. Um, I'm pretty sure I've built all of these at some point. Um, they're kind of ungainly because, I don't know if you can tell down here, you actually do put the gears in the hips. So you can move the, move the legs, but those are long, long legs. And it's sort of just, yeah. I mean, they did what they could with what they had. So I, I do respect that. And apparently there are also uh, three other builds where you just take two. I'll give you another look at this one. Where you take two and you build it into another thing. And then you take two more and then two more to make a third thing. Um, those ones didn't have any like actually printed instructions. I do believe those were online exclusive instructions. Um... But yeah, man, doing all these videos, this really takes me back to the golden age of Bionicle. It was fun. Anyways, I will be doing the other two uh, sometime in the next week or so. And I look forward to seeing you guys and uh, all, this, all the different things that you guys comment on these. Like, I've actually been very much enjoying the commentary. Um, we had somebody talking about Kopaka's, you know, role in the group with the actual lore, and, I was, and it made, reminded me that, man, I, I've really forgotten a lot about these things, you know, lore-wise. And there was a huge gap where I just didn't get any more, and I didn't follow up with anything, and, and half the time, I don't know what half these things are, but at least, at least I was there at the beginning, you know. I, I'm glad I have these. Very fun memories with all these. It's very cool. Well, I'll see you guys on the next one. See ya.